Chocolate or an Indian Drink by Antonio Colmanero Translated by Captain James Wadsworth This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Chocolate or an Indian Drink By the use and moderate use whereof health is preserved, sickness diverted and cured, especially the plague of the guts, vulgarly called the new disease, fluxes, consumptions, and coughs of the lungs, with sundry and other diseases. By it also, conception is caused, the birth hastened and facilitated, beauty gained and continued. Written originally in Spanish by Antonio Comanero. Translated by Captain James Wadsworth. To the Gentry of the English Nation. Sirs, the ensuing tract, I, many years since translated, out of the original Spanish, and dedicated to the Right Honourable Edward, Lord Conway, etc., by whose noble patronage the confection whereof it treats, together with itself, were first admitted into the English court, where they received the approbation of the most noble and judicious those days afforded since which time it has been universally sought for and thirsted after by people of all degrees especially those of the female sex either for the pleasure therein naturally residing to cure and divert diseases or else to supply some defects of nature wherein it challenges a special prerogative above all other medicines whatsoever the author thereof was one antonio comanero of Leedsma who sometimes lived in the west indies where it is very much used and held in great esteem until this day as also in spain italy and flanders and admired by the most learned doctors of all those nations as for the name chocolate it is an indian word compounded of eight as some say or as others adel which in the mexican language signifieth water and cocoa the noise that the water wherein the chocolate is put maketh when it is stirred in a cup until it bubble and rise unto a froth and may be called in english a compounded or confectioned drink the confection itself consists of several ingredients according to the different constitutions of those that use it the principal of which is called cacao a kind of nut or kernel bigger than a great almond which grows upon a tree called the tree of cacao, containing in it the quality of the four elements, as will appear in the following discourse. The virtues thereof are no less various than admirable, for, besides that it preserves health, and makes such as drinks it often fat and corpulent, fair and amiable, it vehemently incites to Venus, and causes conception in women, hastens and facilitates their delivery. It is an excellent help to digestion. It cures consumptions and the cough of the lungs, the new disease or plague of the guts, and other fluxes, the green sickness, jaundice, and all manner of inflammations, opilations and obstructions. It quite takes away the morphew, cleanses the teeth, and sweeteneth the breath, provokes urine, cures the stone and stangury, expels poison, and preserves from all infectious diseases. But I shall not assume to enumerate all the virtues of this confection, for that were impossible, every day producing new and admirable effects in such as drink it. I shall rather refer to the testimony of those noble personages, who are known constantly to use and receive constant and manifold benefits by it, having thereby no other aim than the general good of this commonwealth, whereof I am a faithful member, and to be esteemed as I really am. Gentlemen, your affectionate friend, to love and serve you, Don Diego de Vadisfort, Westminster, December 20th, 1651. The Translator To every individual man and woman, learned or unlearned, honest or dishonest, in the due praise of divine chocolate. 
Doctors lay by your irksome books, and all ye petty fogging rooks, leave quacking and enuncleate the virtues of our chocolate. Let the universal medicine, made up of dead men's bones and skin, be henceforth illegitimate, and yield to sovereign chocolate. Let body baths be used no more, nor smoky stoves, but by the whore of Babylon since happy fate has blessed us with chocolate. Let old Punctius grease in his shoes with his mock balsam and abuse. No more the world but meditate the excellence of chocolate. The doctor Trigg, who so excels, no longer trudge to westward wells, for though that water expurgate, tis but the dredges of chocolate. Let all the Parcellinian crew, who can extract Christian from Jew, or out of monarchy a state, break all their stills for chocolate. Tell us no more of weapon salve, but rather doom us to a grave. For sure our wounds will ulcerate, unless they're washed with chocolate. The thriving saint who will not come, within a sack-shop's bowsing roam, his spirit to exhilarate, drinks bowls at home of chocolate. His spouse, when she, brimful of sense, doth want her due benevolence, and babes of grace would propagate, is always sipping chocolate. The roaring crew of gallant ones, whose marrow rots within their bones, their bodies quickly regulate, if once but soosed in chocolate. Young heirs that have more land than wit, when once they do but taste of it, will rather spend their whole estate than weaned be from chocolate. The nut-brown lasses of the land, whom nature veiled in face and hand, are quickly beauties of high rate by one small draught of chocolate. Besides it saves the monies lost each day in patches which did cost, them dear until of late they found this heavenly chocolate nor need the woman longer grieve who spend their oil yet not conceive for tis a help immediate if such but lick of chocolate consumptions too be well assured are no less soon than soundly cured excepting such as do relate unto the purse by chocolate Nay more, its virtue is so much, that if a lady get a touch, her grief it will extenuate, if she but smell of chocolate. The feeble man whom nature ties, to do his mistress's drudgeries, oh how it will his mind elate, if she allow him chocolate. Twill make old women young and fresh, create new motions of the flesh, and cause them long for you know what, if they but taste of chocolate. There's near a common council man, Whose life would reach unto a span. Should he not well affect the state, And first and last drink chocolate? Nor e'er a citizen's chaste wife, That ever shall prolong her life, Whilst open stands her postern gate, Unless she drink of chocolate. Nor does the Levite any harm, it keepeth his devotion warm, and eke the hair upon his pate, so long as he drinks chocolate. Both high and low, both rich and poor, my lord, my lady, and his, with all the folks at Billingsgate, bow, bow your hams to chocolate. Don Diego de Vadisfort To the Author Great Don, Grandi of Spain, Illustrissimo of Venice, High and mighty King of Candy, Great Banshaw of Babylon, Prince of the Moon, Lord of the Seven Stars, Governor of the Castle of Comfort, Sole Admiral of the Floating Caravan, Author of the European Mercury, Chief General and Admiral of the Invisible Fleet and Army of Terra Incognita, Captain James Wadsworth. The allowance of Melchor de Lora, physician general for the kingdom of Spain. I, Dr. Melchor de Lera, physician general for the kingdom of Spain, at the command of Don John de Velasco and Acebido, 
vicar-general of Madrid, have seen this treatise of chocolate, composed by Antonio Colmenero of Leedsma, which is very learned and curious, and therefore it ought to be licensed for the press, it containing nothing contrary to good manners, and cannot be but very pleasing to those who are affected to chocolate. In testimony thereof, I have subscribed my name in Madrid, the twenty-third day of August, 1631. Melchor de Lera. The testimonial of John de Mina, doctor and physician to the king of Spain. I, John de Mina, physician to his majesty, and one of the council general of the Inquisition, have seen this treatise of chocolate, composed by Dr. Antonio Colmenero of Leedsma, by command of the supreme royal court of justice, which containeth nothing contrary to good manners, and the subject is very learnedly handled, and with great judgment and no doubt, but it will give much pleasure and content to all those who are affected to chocolate, and therefore may be printed, and in confirmation of this truth, I have hitherto subscribed my name the 17th of September, 1631. John de Mina, Doctor in Physique To the reader, the number is so great of those who in these times drink chocolate, that not only in the Indies, where this kind of drink hath its original, but it is also much used in Spain, Italy, and Flanders, and particularly at the Cure, and many do speak diversely of it, according to the benefit or hurt they receive from it, some saying that it is stopping others, and those the greater part, that it makes one fat, others that the use of it strengthens the stomach, others that it heats and burns them, and others say that although they take it every hour, and in the dog days, yet they find themselves well with it, and therefore my desire is, to take this pains for the pleasure and profit of the public, endeavouring to accommodate it to the content of all, according to the variety of those things wherewith it may be mixed, so that every man may make choice of that, which shall be most agreeable to his disposition. I have not seen any who have written anything concerning this drink, but only a physician of Marchena, who, as it seems, writ only one by relation holding an opinion that the chocolate is stopping, because that cocoa, the principal ingredient of which it is made, is cold and dry, but because this one reason may not have power to keep some from the use of it, who are troubled with opalations, I think fit to defend this confection, with philosophical reasons against any whosoever will condemn this drink, which is so wholesome and so good, knowing how to make the paste in that manner, that it may be agreeable to diverse dispositions in the moderate drinking of it, and so, with all possible brevity, shall distinguish and divide this treatise into four points, or heads. In the first place, I shall declare what chocolate is, and what are the qualities of cocoa, and the other ingredients of this confection, where I shall treat of the receipt set down by the aforesaid author of Marchena, and declare my opinion concerning the same. The second point shall treat of the quality which resulteth out of the mixture of these simples which are put into it. In the third place, the manner of compounding, and how many ways they use to drink it in the Indies. In the fourth and the last place, I shall treat of the quantity, and how it ought to be taken at what time, and by what persons. End of Part 1 Part 2 of Chocolate, or an Indian Drink, by Antonio Calmanero. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Chocolate or an Indian Drink by Antonio Colmenero Part 2 The First Point Concerning the first point, I say, that chocolate is a name of the Indians, which in our vulgar Castilian we may call a certain confection, in which, among the ingredients, the principal basis and foundation is the cacao, 
of whose nature and quality it is necessary first to treat. And therefore I say, according to the common received opinion, that it is cold and dry, a prodominio, that is to say, that though it be true that every simple contains in it the qualities of the four elements, in the action and reaction which it hath in it, yet there results another distinct quality, which we call complexion. This quality or complexion, which arises of this mixture, is not always one and the same, neither hath it the effect in all the mixtures, but they may be varied nine ways. Four simple, from whence one only quality doth abound, and four compounded, from whence two symbolizing qualities are predominant, and one other, which we call ad pontus, which is of all these foresaid qualities, which are equilibrio, that is to say, in equal measure and degree. Of all these the complexion of cacao is composed. Since there arise two qualities, which are cold and dry, and in the substance that rules them, hath restringent and obstructive of the nature of the element of the earth, and then as it is mixed, and not a simple element, it must needs have parts correspondent to the rest of the elements, and particularly it partakes and that not a little, of those which correspond with the element of air, that is, heat and moisture, which are governed by the unctuous parts, there being drawn out of the cacao much butter, which in the Indies I have seen drawn out of it, for the face by the Criollas. It may philosophically be objected in this manner, two contrary qualities and disagreeing cannot be in gradu intenso in one and the same subject. Cacao is cold and dry in predominancy, therefore it cannot have the qualities contrary to those which are heat and moisture. The first proposition is most certain, and grounded upon good philosophy. The second is contented unto, by all. The third, which is the conclusion, is regular. It cannot be denied that the argument is very strong, and these reasons being considered by him of Marcina, have made him affirm that chocolate is obstructive, it seeming to be contrary to philosophy, that in it there should be found heat and moisture, in gradu intenso, and to be so likewise in cold and dry. To this there are two things to be answered. One, that he never saw the experience of drawing out the butter, which I have done, and that when the chocolate is made without adding anything to the dried powder, which it is incorporated, only by beating it well together, and is united and made into a paste, which is a sign that there is a moist and glutinous part, which of necessity must correspond with the element of air. The other reason we will draw from philosophy, affirming that, in the cacao, there are different substances, in the one that is to say, in that which is not so fat, it has a greater quantity of the oil than of the earthy substance, and in the fatter part it hath more of the earthy than of the oily substance. In these there is heat and moisture in predominancy, and in the other cold and dry. Notwithstanding that it is hard to be believed, that in one and the same substance, and so little of the cacao, it can have substances so different, to the end that it may appear more easy, clear, and evident. First we see it in the rhubarb, which hath it in hot and soluble parts, and parts which are binding, cold, and dry, which have a virtue to strengthen, bind, and stop the looseness of the belly. I say also that he that sees and considers the steel so much of the nature of the earth, as being heavy, thick, cold, and dry, it seems to be thought unproper for the curing opulations, but rather to be apt to increase them, and yet it is given for a proper remedy against them. This difficulty is cleared thus, that though it be true that it hath much of the earthy part, yet it hath also parts of sulphur and of quicksilver, which do open and disopilate, neither doth it so, until it helped by art, as it is ground, stirred, and made fine in the preparing of it. The sulphurous parts, and those of quicksilver, being thin, active, and penetrative, they mingle at the last with those parts which are earthly and astringent, 
insomuch that they being mingled, after this manner, one with another, we cannot now say that the steel is astringent, but rather that it is penetrative, attenuating and opening. Let us prove this doctrine by authorities, and let the first be from Galen 1.3 of the Qualities of Simples, chapter 14, where, first of all, he teacheth that all those medicines which, to our sense, seem to be simple, are notwithstanding naturally compounded, containing in themselves contrary qualities, and that is to say, a quality to expel and to retain, to incrassate and attenuate, to refi and to condense. Neither are we to wonder at it, it being understood that in every foresaid medicine there is a quality to heat and to cool, to moisten and to dry and whatsoever medicine it be, it hath in it thick and thin parts, rare and dense, soft and hard. And in the fifteenth chapter following the same book, he puts an example of the broth of a cock, which moves the belly, and the flesh hath the virtue to bind. He puts also the example of the aloes, which, if it was to be washed, loses the purgative virtue, or that which it hath is but weak." that this differing virtue and faculty is found in diverse substances, or parts of simple medicants, Gallen shows in the first book of his Simple Medicines, and the seventeenth chapter, bringing the example of milk, in which three substances are found and separated, that is to say, the substance of cheese, which has the virtue to stop the flux of the belly, and the substance of whey, which is purging, and butter, as it is expressed in the said Gallen, chapter 15, also, we find in wine, which is in the must, three substances, that is to say, earth, which is the chief, and a thinner substance, which is the flour, and may be called the scum, or froth, and a third substance, which we properly call wine, and every one of these substances contains in itself diverse qualities and virtues in the colour, in the smell, and in other accidents. Aristotle, in the fourth book of the Meteors, and the first chapter, treating putrefaction, he found the same substances, and in the second chapter, next following, were he that curious may read it, and also by the doctrine of Galen and Aristotle, diverse substances are attributed to every of the mixed, under one and the same form and quantity, which is very conformable to reason, if we consider, that every ailment, be it ever so simple, begets and produces in the liver, four humours, not only differing in temper, but also in substance, and begets more or less of that humour, according as that ailment hath more or fewer parts, corresponding to the substance of that humour, which is most engendered. And so in cold diseases we give warm nourishment, and cold nourishment in hot diseases. From which evident examples, and many others, which we might produce to this purpose, we may gather that, when we grind and stir the cacao, the diverse parts, which nature has given it, do artificially and intimately mix themselves one with another, and so the unctuous, warm, and moist parts, mingled with the earthy, as we have said of the steel, represses and leaves them not so binding as they were before, but rather with a mediocrity, more inclining to the warm and moist temper of the air, than to the cold and dry of the earth, as it doth appear, when it is made fit to drink, that you scarce give it two turns with the mullinet, when there rises the fatty scum, by which you may see how much it partaketh of the oily part. From which doctrine I gather that the author of Marcina was in error, who, writing of chocolate, saith that it causes opilations, because cacao is astringent, and if the astriction were not corrected, by the intimate mixing of one part with another, by means of the grinding, as is said before. Besides, it having so many ingredients which are naturally hot, it must of necessity have this effect, that is to say, to open, attenuate, and not to bind, and indeed there is no cause of bringing more examples, or producing more reasons for this truth, than that which we see in the cacao itself which, if it not be stirred and compounded, as aforesaid, to make the chocolate, but eating of it, as is in the fruit, as the crolasse eat it in the Indies, it doth notably obstruct, and cause stoppings, for no other cause but this, that the diverse substance which it contains are not perfectly mingled by the mastication, onely, 
but require the artificial mixture which we have spoken of before. Besides, our adversary should have considered and called to his memory the first rudiments of philosophy, that a dicto secundum quid, a dictum simpliciter, non valet consequentia. As it is not enough to say, the black amour is white, because his teeth are white, for he may be black, though he hath white teeth, and so it is not enough to say that the cacao is stopping, and therefore the confection which is made of it is also stopping. The tree which bears this fruit is so delicate, and the earth where it grows is so extreme hot, that to keep the tree from being consumed by the sun, they first plant other trees, and when they are grown up to a good height, then they plant the cacao trees, that when it first shows itself above the ground, those trees which are already grown may shelter it from the sun, and the fruit doth not grow naked, but ten or twelve of them are in one gourd or cod, which is of the bigness of a great black fig, or bigger, and of the same form and colour. There are two sorts of cacao. The one is common, which is of a grey colour, inclining towards red. The other is broader and bigger, which they call patlaxti, and this is white and more drying, whereby it causes watchfulness and drives away sleep, and therefore it is not so useful as the ordinary. This shall suffice to be said of the cacao. And as for the rest of the ingredients, which makes our chocolatical confection, there is notable variety, because some do put into it black pepper, and also tasco red root, like madder, which is not proper, because it is so hot and dry, but only for one who hath a very cold liver. And of this opinion was a certain doctor of the University of Mexico, of whom a religious man of good credit told me, that he finding the ordinary round pepper was not fit to bring his purpose about, and to the end he might discover whether the long red pepper were more proper. He made trial upon the liver of a sheep, and putting the ordinary pepper on one side and the red pepper chili on the other, after twenty-four hours the part where the ordinary pepper lay was dried up, and the other part continued moist, as if nothing had been thrown upon it. The receipt of him who wrote Marchina is this, of cacao, seven hundred, of white sugar, one pound and a half, cinnamon, two ounces, of long pepper, fourteen, of cloves, half an ounce, three cods of the longwood, or campeche tree, or instead of that, the weight of two reals, or a shilling of anise seed, as much of agiote, as will give the colour, which is the quantity of a hazelnut, some put in almond kernels of nuts, and orange flower water. Concerning this receipt, I shall first say, this shoe will not fit every foot, but for those who have diseases, or are inclining to be infirm, you may either add or take away according to the necessity and temperature of every one, and I hold it not amiss that sugar be put into it, when it is drunk, so that it be according to the quality I shall hereafter set down, and sometimes they make tablets of the sugar and the chocolate together, which they do onely to please the palates, as the dames of Mexico do use it, and they are there sold in shops, and are confected and eaten like other sweetmeats. For the cloves which are put into this drink by the aforesaid author, the best writers of this composition use them not, peradventure upon this reason, that although they take away the ill savour of the mouth, they bind, as a learned writer hath expressed in these verses. Fitorem emendat oris cariophilia foidum, constringunt ventrem, primaque membra juant. Cloves do perfume a stinking breath, and bind the belly, hence the prime members, comfort find. And because they are binding, and hot and dry in the third degree, they must not be used, though they help the chief parts of a concoction, which are the stomach and liver, as appears by the verses before recited. The husks, or cods of longwood, or campeche, are very good, and smells like fennel, and every one puts in of these, because they are not very hot, though it excuse not the putting in of a nice seed, as says the author of this receipt, for there is no chocolate without it, because it is good for many cold diseases, being hot in the third degree, and to temper the coldness of the cacao and it may appear it helps the indisposition of the cold parts. I will cite the verses of one curious in this art. 
morbosos renes, vesicam, cutura, vulnam, intestina, jecur, cumque luene caput, confortat, varisque anisum subtita morbis membra, istud tantum vim leve semen habet. The reins, the bladder, throat and thing between, and trails and liver with the head and spleen, and other parts by anise it are comforted, so great are virtues in that little seed. The quantity of a nut of the Asiote Tasco is too little to colour the quantity made according to his receipt, and therefore he that makes it may put in it as much as he thinks fit. Those who add almonds and nuts do not ill, because they give it more body and substance than maize or panazio grain like millet which others use, and for my part I should always put it into chocolate, for almonds, besides what I have said of them before, are moderately hot, and have a thin juice, but you must not use new almonds, as a learned author says in these verses. Dat modice calidum dulcisque amygdala succum, et tenuem inducunt plurima damna nova. New almonds yield a hot and slender juice, but bring new mischiefs by too often use. And the small nuts are not ill for our purpose, for they have almost the temper which the almonds have, onely because they are drier, they come nearer the temper of collar, and do therefore strengthen the belly and the stomach being dried. For so they must be used for the confection, and they preserve the head from those vapours which rise from the belly, as it appears by the said author in these verses. Bilis avelanam sequitur, sed roborat alvum, ventris, et a fumis liberat assa caput. Fill birds breed collar, the belly fortify, benzo and the head frees from fumosity. And therefore they are proper for such as are troubled with ventuosities and hypochondriacal vapours, which offend the brain and there cause troublesome dreams and sad imaginations. Those who mix maize or panisio in the chocolate do very ill, because those grains do beget a very melancholy humour, as the same author expresses in these verses. Crassa melancholicum praestant tibi panica succum, sicant si penas membra gelantque furis. Gross ears of corn have choleriki juice, no doubt, which dries if taken inward, cools without. It is also apparently windy, and those which mix it in this confection do it only for their profit, by increasing the quantity of the chocolate, because every fenedgia, or measure of maize or Indian wheat granny, containing about a bushel and a half, is sold for eight shillings, and they sell this confection for four shillings a pound, which is the ordinary price of the chocolate. The cinnamon is hot and dry in the third degree. It provokes urine and helps the kidneys and rise of those who are troubled with cold diseases, and it is good for the eyes, and in effect it is cordial, as appears by the author of these verses. Commoda et urinae cinnamomum et renibus, lumina clarificat, Dira venena fugat. Cinnamon helps the rains and urine well. It clears the eyes and poison doth expel. The achiote has a piercing attenuating quality, as appeareth by the common practice of the physicians in the Indies, experienced daily in the effect of it, who do give it to their patients to cut and attenuate the gross humours, which do cause shortness of breath and stopping of urine and so it may be used for any kind of oppilations, for we give it for the stoppings which are in the breast, or in the region of the belly, or any other part of the body. And concerning the long red pepper, there are four sorts of it. One is called chicotes, the other very little, which are called chiltepin, and these two kinds are very quick and biting. The other two are called tonchilles, and these are moderately hot, for they are eaten with bread, as they eat other fruits, and they are of a yellow colour, and they grow onely about the towns which are in and adjoining to the lake of Mexico. The other pepper is called chopaculagua, 
which has a broad husk, and this is not so biting as the first, nor so gentle as the last, and is that which is usually put into the chocolate. There are also other ingredients which are used in this confection, one called mechasucho, and another which they call vincaxtili, which in the Spanish they call orajales, which are sweet-smelling flowers, aromatical and hot. And the mechasucho hath a purgative quality, for in the Indies they make a purging portion of it. Instead of this, in Spain, they put into the confection powder of Alexandria for opening the belly. I have spoken of all these ingredients, that every one may make a choice of those which please him best, or are most proper for infirmities. THE SECOND POINT As concerning the second point, I say, as I have said before, that though it be true that the cacao is mingled with all these ingredients which are hot, yet there is to be a greater quantity of cacao than of all the rest of the ingredients which serve to temper the coldness of the cacao, just as when we seek of two medicines of contrary qualities to compound one which shall be of a moderate temper, in the same manner doth result the same action and reaction of the cold parts of the cacao, and of the hot parts of the other ingredients, which makes the chocolate of so moderate a quality, that it differs very little from a mediocrity, and when there is not put in any ordinary pepper or cloves, but only a little aniseed, as I shall show hereafter, we may boldly say that it is very temperate, and this may be proved by reason and experience, supposing that which Gallen says to be true, that every mixed medicine warmth the cold, and cooleth the hot, bringing the example of oil of roses. By experience I say that in the Indies, as is the custom of the country, I coming in a heat to visit a sick person, and asking water to refresh me, they persuaded me to take a draught of chocolate, which quenched my thirst, and in the morning, if I took it fasting, it did warm and comfort my stomach. Now let us prove by reason. We have already proved that all the parts of the cacao are not cold, for we have made it appear that the unctuous parts, which are many, be all hot or temperate, then, though it be true, that the quantity of the cacao is greater than all of the rest of the ingredients, yet the cold parts are the most, not half so many as the hot, and if for all this they should be more, yet by stirring and mangling of the warm, unctuous parts, they are much qualified. And, on the other side, it being mixed with the other ingredients, which are hot in the second and third degree, being the predominant quality, it must needs be brought to a mediocrity. Like as two men who shake hands, the one being hot and the other cold, the one hand borrows heat, and the other is made colder, and in conclusion, neither hand retains the cold or heat it had before, but both of them remain more temperate. So, likewise, two men, who go to wrestle, at the first they are all in their full vigour and strength, but after they have struggled for a while, their force lessens by degrees, till at last they are both much weaker than when they began to wrestle. And Aristotle was also of this opinion in his fourth book of Nature of Beasts, Cap. 3, where he says that every agent suffers with the patient, as that which cuts is made dull by the thing it cuts, that which warms cools itself, and that which thrusts or forces forward is in some sort driven back itself. From whence I gather it is better to use chocolate, after it hath been made some time, a moment at least. I believe this time to be necessary for breaking the contrary qualities of the several ingredients, and to bring the drink to a moderate temper. For, as it always falls out at the first, that every contrary will have its predominancy, and will work his own effects, nature not liking well to be heated and cooled at the same time. And this is the cause why Gallen, in his twelfth book of method, doth advise not to use felonium till after a year, or at least six months, because it is a composition made of opium, which is cold in the fourth degree, and of pepper, and other ingredients which are hot in the third degree. This theorem and doctrine is made good by the practice which some have made, of whom I have asked, what chocolate did best agree with them, and they have affirmed that the best is that which hath been made some moments, and that the new doth hurt by loosening the stomach, 
and, in my opinion, the reason of it is that the unctuous or fat parts are not altogether corrected by the earthly parts of the cacao. And this I shall thus prove, for, as I shall declare hereafter, if you make the chocolate boil when you drink it, the boiling of it divides the fat and oily part, and that makes a relaxation in the stomach in the old chocolate, as well as if it were new. So that I conclude in this second point that the chocolatical confection is not so cold as the cacao, nor so hot as the rest of the ingredients, but there results from the action and reaction of these ingredients a moderate temper which may be good both for the cold and hot stomachs, being taken moderately, and shall be declared hereafter, and it having been made a moment at the least, as is already proved. And so I know not why any, many having made experience of this confection, which is composed, as it ought to be, for every particular, should speak ill of it. Besides, were it so much used, the most, if not all, as well in the Indies as in Spain, find it agreeeth well with them. He of Marchina has no ground in saying that it did cause opilations, for if it were so, the liver being obstructed, it would extenuate its subject, and by experience we see to the contrary, that it makes fat, the reason whereof I shall show hereafter, and this shall suffice for the second point. End of Part 2「Section three of Chocolate or an Indian Drink. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Laurie Ann Walden. Chocolate or an Indian Drink by Antonio Colmenero de Ledesma. The third point. Having treated in the first point of the definition of chocolate, the quality of the cacao, and of the other ingredients, and, in the second point, of the complexion which results from the mixture of them, there remains now in the third point to show the way how to mingle them. And first I will bring the best receipt, and the most to the purpose that I could find out. Although it be true which I have said, that one receipt cannot be given which shall be proper for all, that is to be understood of those who are sick. For those that are strong and in health, this may serve. And for the other, as I have said in the conclusion of the first point, every one may make choice of the ingredients, as they may be useful to this or that part of his body. The receipt is this. To every one hundred cacaos you must put two cods of the long red pepper, of which I have spoken before, and are called in the Indian tongue chilparlagua, and instead of those of the Indies, you may take those of Spain, which are broadest and least hot. One handful of anise seed or ajuelas, which are otherwise called pinacaxlidos, and two of the flowers called mechasuchil, if the belly be bound. But instead of this, in Spain, we put in six roses of Alexandria beat to powder, one cod of campeche or logwood, two drams of cinnamon, almonds and hazelnuts of each one dozen, of white sugar half a pound, of achiote enough to give it the color. And if you cannot have those things which come from the Indies, you may make it with the rest. The way of compounding. The cacao and the other ingredients must be beaten in a mortar of stone, or ground upon a broad stone, which the Indians call matate, and is only made for that use. But the first thing that is to be done is to dry the ingredients, all except the achiote, with care that they may be beaten to powder, keeping them still in stirring that they may not be burnt or become black, and if they be over-dried they will be bitter and lose their virtue. The cinnamon and the long red pepper are to be first beaten with the anise seed, and then beat the cacao which you must beat by a little and little till it be all powdered and sometimes turn it round in the beating, that it may mix the better. And every one of these ingredients must be beaten by itself, and then put all the ingredients into the vessel where the cacao is, which you must stir together with a spoon, and then take out that paste and put it into the mortar, under which you must lay a little fire after the confection is made. But you must be very careful not to put more fire than will warm it, that the unctuous part does not dry away 
and you must also take care to put in the achiote in the beading, that it may the better take the color. You must searse all the ingredients, but only the cacao. And if you take the shell from the cacao, it is the better. And when you shall find it to be well beaten and incorporated, which you shall know by the shortness of it, then with a spoon take up some of the paste, which will be almost liquid, and so either make it into tablets or put it into boxes, and when it is cold it will be hard. To make the tablets you must put a spoonful of the paste upon a piece of paper, the Indians put it upon the leaf of a plantain tree, where, being put into the shade, it grows hard, and then bowing the paper the tablet falls off by reason of the fatness of the paste. But if you put it into anything of earth or wood, it sticks fast, and will not come off, but with scraping or breaking. In the Indies they take it two several ways. The one, being the common way, is to take it hot, with atoye, which was the drink of the ancient Indians. The Indians call atoye pape, made of the flour of maize, and so they mingle it with the chocolate, and that the atoye may be more wholesome, they take off the husks of the maize, which is windy and melancholy and so there remains only the best and most substantial part. Now, to return to the matter, I say that the other modern drink, which the Spaniards use so much, is of two sorts. The one is that the chocolate, being dissolved with cold water and the scum taken off, and put into another vessel, the remainder is put upon the fire with sugar, and, when it is warm, then pour it upon the scum you took off before, and so drink it. The other is to warm the water, and then, when you have put it into a pot or dish, as much chocolate as you think fit, put in a little of the warm water, and then grind it well with the molinet, and, when it is well ground, put the rest of the warm water to it, and so drink it with sugar. Besides these former ways, there is one other way, which is, put the chocolate into a pipkin with a little water, and let it boil well till it be dissolved and then put in sufficient water and sugar, according to the quantity of the chocolate, and then boil it again until there comes an oily scum upon it, and then drink it. But if you put too much fire, it will run over and spoil. But in my opinion, this last way is not so wholesome, though it pleases the palate better, because when the oily is divided from the earthy part, which remains at the bottom, it causeth melancholy." and the oily part loosens the stomach, and takes away the appetite. There is another way to drink chocolate which is cold, and it takes its name from the principal ingredient, and is called cacao, which they use at feasts to refresh themselves, and it is made after this manner. The chocolate being dissolved in water with the molinet, take off the scum or crassy part, which riseth in greater quantity, when the cacao is older and more putrefied. The scum is laid aside by itself in a little dish, and then put sugar into that part from whence you took the scum, and pour it from on high into the scum, and so drink it cold. And this drink is so cold that it agreeeth not with all men's stomachs, for by experience we find the hurt it doth by causing pains in the stomach, and especially to women. I could deliver the reason of it, but I avoid it, because I will not be tedious. Some use it, etc., there is another way to drink it cold, which is called cacao pinoli, and it is done by adding to the same chocolate, having made the confection as is before set down, so much maize, dried and well ground, and taken from the husk, and then well mingled in the mortar with the chocolate, it falls all into flour or dust. And so these things being mingled, as is said before, there riseth the scum, and so you take and drink it, as before." There is another way, which is a shorter and quicker way of making it, for men of business, who cannot stay long about it, and it is more wholesome, and it is that which I use. That is, first to set some water to warm, and while it warms you throw a tablet, or some chocolate, scraped, and mingled with sugar, into a little cup, and when the water is hot, you pour the water to the chocolate, and then dissolve it with the molinet and then, without taking off the scum, drink it as is before directed. THE FOURTH PART There remains to be handled in the last point of the quantity which is to be drunk, 
at what time, and to buy what persons, because if it be drunk beyond measure, not only of chocolate, but of all other drinks, or meats, though of themselves they are good and wholesome, they may be hurtful. And if any find it opilative, it comes by the too much use of it, as when one drinks over much wine, instead of comforting and warming himself, he breeds and nourisheth cold diseases, because nature cannot overcome it, nor turn so great a quantity into good nourishment. So he that drinks much chocolate, which hath fat parts, cannot make distribution of so great a quantity to all the parts, and that part which remains in the slender veins of the liver must need cause opilations and obstructions. To avoid this inconvenience, you must only take five or six ounces in the morning, if it be in winter. And if the party who takes it be choleric, instead of ordinary water, let him take the distilled water of endive. The same reason serves in summer, for those who take it physically, having the liver hot and obstructed. If his liver be cold and obstructed, then to use the water of rhubarb. And to conclude, you may take it till the month of May, especially in temperate days. But I do not approve that in the dog days it should be taken in Spain, unless it be one who by custom of taking it receives no prejudice by it. And if he be of a hot constitution, and that he have need to take it in that season, let it, as is said before, be mingled with water of endive. And once in four days, and chiefly when he finds his stomach in the morning to be weak and fainting." And though it be true that in the Indies they use it all the year long, it being a very hot country, and so it may seem by the same reason it may be taken in Spain, first I say that custom may allow it, secondly that as there is an extraordinary proportion of heat, so there is also of moisture, which helps with the exorbitant heat to open the pores, and so dissipates and impoverisheth our substance or natural vigor, by reason whereof, not only in the morning, but at any time of the day, they use it without prejudice. And this is most true, that the excessive heat of the country draws out the natural heat, and disperseth that of the stomach, and of the inward parts. Insomuch that though the weather be never so hot, yet the stomach being cold, it usually doth good. I do not only say this of the chocolate, which, as I have proved, hath a moderate heat, but if you drink pure wine, be the weather never so hot, it hurts not, but rather comforts the stomach. And if in hot weather you drink water, the hurt it doth is apparent, in that it cools the stomach too much, from whence comes a vitiated concoction, and a thousand other inconveniences. You must also observe that it being granted, as I have said, that there are earthy parts in the cacao which fall to the bottom of the cup when you make the drink, Diverse are of the opinion that that which remains is the best and the more substantial, and they hurt themselves not a little by drinking of it. For besides, that it is an earthy substance, thick and stopping, it is of a melancholy nature, and therefore you must avoid the drinking of it, contenting yourself with the best, which is the most substantial. Last of all, there rests one difficulty to be resolved, formerly pointed at, namely, what is the cause, why chocolate makes most of them that drink it fat. For considering that all of the ingredients except the cacao do rather extenuate than make fat, because they are hot and dry in the third degree. For we have already said that the qualities which do predominate in cacao are cold and dry, which are very unfit to add any substance to the body. Nevertheless, I say that the many unctuous parts, which I have proved to be in the cacao, are those which pinguify and make fat, and the hotter ingredients of this composition serve for a guide or vehicle to pass to the liver and the other parts, until they come to the fleshy parts, and there finding a like substance which is hot and moist, as is the unctuous part, converting itself into the same substance, it doth augment and pinguify." Much more might be said from the ground of philosophy and physique, but because that is fitter for the schools than for this discourse, I leave it, and only give this caution, that in my receipt you may add melon seeds, and seeds of pompions of Valencia, dried and beaten into powder, where there is any heat of the liver or kidneys. And if there be any obstructions of the liver or spleen with any cold distemper, you may mix the powder of ceterach, to which you may add amber or musk to please the scent. 
and it will be no small matter to have pleased all with this discourse. Finis. How to make use of the chocolate, to be taken as a drink, exceeding cordial for the comfort of the healthful, and also for those in weakness and consumptions, to be dissolved in milk or water. If you please to take it in milk, to a quart three ounces of chocolate will be sufficient. Scrape your chocolate very fine, put it into your milk when it boils, work it very well with the Spanish instrument called molinillo between your hands, which instrument must be of wood, with a round knob made very round, and cut ragged, that as you turn it in your hands the milk may froth and dissolve the chocolate the better. Then set the milk on the fire again, until it be ready to boil, having the yolk of two eggs well beaten with some of the hot milk. Then put your eggs into the milk, and chocolate and sugar, as much as you like for your taste, and work all together with the molinillo, and thus drink a good draught. Or, if you please, you may slice a little manchet into a dish, and so eat it for a breakfast. You may, if you please, make your chocolate with water and sugar, working it after the same order with your molinillo, which for some weak stomachs may chance to be better liked. And many there be that beat almonds, and strain them into the water it is boiled, and wrought with the chocolate and sugar. Others like to put the yolks of eggs as before in the milk, and even sweeten it with sugar to your taste. If you drink a good draught of this in a morning, you may travel all the day without any other thing. This is so substantial and cordial. THE MANNER OF MAKING CHOCOLATE Set a pot of conduit water over the fire until it boils. Then to every person that is to drink, put an ounce of chocolate, with as much sugar into another pot, wherein you must pour a pint of the said boiling water, and therein mingle the chocolate and the sugar with the instrument called el molinillo, until it be thoroughly incorporated, which done, pour in as many half-pints of the said water as there be ounces of chocolate, and if you please you may put in one or two yolks of fresh eggs, which must be beaten until they froth very much. The hotter it is drunk, the better it is. Being cold, it may do harm. You may likewise put in a slice of white bread or biscuit, and eat that with the chocolate. The newer and fresher made it is, the more benefit you shall find by it. That which comes from foreign parts, and is stale, is not so good as that which is made here. Finis End of section 3 End of Chocolate or an Indian Drink by Antonio Colmenero de Ledesma.